Hey, if you're a Ranger user and you're exploring the opportunity of adding GitOps to your application delivery stack, I'm sure you've looked at Fleet. If not, Fleet is one of Ranger's latest projects that is targeted towards GitOps. And today, I wanted to go over an opportunity with you to put together Ranger, Shipa, and Fleet to go all the way from managing your cluster infrastructure to delivering your application, policies, and have a complete developer platform and application platform together. Let's see what we have here. All right, on this quick video, we're going to show you how you can build a complete GitOps stack using Fleet and Shipa. And before we do that quick demo, just as an overview of the, um, the architecture that I have set up, I have a control cluster, which in my case, it's, it's a GKE cluster. You can have it set up anywhere. And in that cluster, I have installed Fleet. The install, it's pretty standard and straightforward. You're running actually two Helm install commands, and I'll leave the description here in the, uh, um, the, um, in the links in the description of the video. And I have also installed Shipa in that control cluster together with our cross-plane provider. The reason why I've combined Shipa and cross-plane here is because then we extend fleet to include one resource reconciliation for apps, policies, our back and everything, as well as it brings you the opportunity of then extending your GitOps stack with fleet and Shipa to also include cluster creation um, cloud resources such as RDS and others. So now you can have a complete GitOps stack for both your infrastructure and your applications. And what we have set up here, I have a simple um, GitHub repo, which also the link is here in the description. Um, I have broken it down by apps and policies in my simple repo. You can break it down further. The world is your oyster. You break it down in any, in any structure that matches your requirements. But as you look through the simple GitHub repo, we're gonna see that the definitions are very much application centric rather than um, infrastructure or Kubernetes centric. And the reason is because this all drives into an application or a developer platform. And you're gonna see how easy it is for you to define policies and for your developers to create application definitions and onboard your own services. Then later as uh, fleet uh, reconciles with the, uh, or syncs with the GitHub repo uh, and communicates with Shipa, then Shipa is gonna be creating the policies and deploying the applications using Fleet's definitions. And as these actions, they happen, they are all going to be combined into an application or developer portal that is Shipa that you can be using on top of your Ranger uh, installs to manage your application at an application level. Let's see what we have here. Hey, okay, so I have here my Shipa Cloud instance that I'm gonna be using for the demo. If you don't have an account, you can create an account under apps.shipa.cloud and everything we're gonna be doing here is free. So no cost at all. If you want to run Shipa in your own cluster, self-hosted, let's say, you already have Rancher, you can find Shipa in the Rancher marketplace and you can install Shipa's control plane directly in one of your clusters. Shipa Cloud gives you the flexibility to start quickly, but if you have um, your self-hosted environment that you wanna use, feel free to do it. I have different clusters here. Um, I have my fleet cluster, which is basically the control cluster that I have from, my, uh, from the previous PowerPoint. And I have two other clusters, app one and app two, that we're gonna be delivering applications to, or you can use to break down different um, tenants, for example, if you want. And I have here my fleet sample GitHub repo. Again, I'm leaving all the links and everything in the description of this video. Um, I've broken it down into apps and policies as I mentioned. And before we go into kind of the setup, let's look at the app definition that I have. We're gonna be deploying one app, right? The first one here I'm gonna be doing is, I'm gonna be creating an app. It's called GitOps app one for example, and I'm saying this team, Shipa team, should be the owner of the application. So now you're managing the RBAC for your developers outside Kubernetes. So we're getting your developers outside Kubernetes. They don't need to run kubectl, for example, to deploy and manage their apps. 
and we're saying, hey, this is the framework or the policy that the application should use when being deployed by the developer. If you, if you don't know Shipa frameworks or policies or policy frameworks in Shipa, um, you, you can find more details also here in the description of this video. But Shipa uses policy frameworks to define policies all the way from resource consumption to auto scale, registry control, network policies and everything without you having to actually dig deep into Kubernetes and write complex regal rules and so on. We're going to show you an example of a policy. And you can use policies to isolate environments between different tenants. So you can create a policy for dev and, and staging and other policy for production. They can all be in the same cluster or different clusters. Or you can use policies for project one, two, and three, and they all can have different security requirements. But great. So here I have my, my application GitOps app one. This team should be the owner in case a developer is part of multiple teams. And this is the policy that I want to use when deploying my application. So the policy here becomes the contract between your DevOps team and the developer. This is where um, the, they intersect and this is how your developer actually interfaces with Kubernetes. So from here, your developers, they don't see Kubernetes. They don't know if you're using GKE, AKS, where you're using Ranger to create your clusters. You're basically defining the policies that should be automatically enforced and this is what's going to be used automatically when the apps are deployed. Down here, I'm saying for my application GitOps app one, I'm going to be deploying this bulletin board application. It's just a simple application. And if you want to find more information about different aspects of the application definition, you can use, you can also find in our documentation that I have the links here. You can have, for example, environment variables definition, um, C name where your application should be exposed or um, define network policies at an application level, for example. So all of these definitions, they can be part. And as you can see, for example, here, if you're doing Canary, exposing on different ports, these are all application specific. So now it becomes extremely easy for your developers to define their own applications and onboard their own applications without the DevOps team having to get involved and manage a bunch of templates, right? Nobody likes doing that. Awesome. The second part I have here is under policies. I have one policy here, but as mentioned, you can think of the policy as a way to create an environment for your different tenants in your different projects that can be connected to one um, or multiple clusters. So here I have, for example, a definition that creates a policy called fleet dev. And it says, this is the resource plan. So for example, every application that is deployed using this policy is going to get this resource plan which in my case, if I come here, it basically shows unlimited. So not great, but you can assign any other with limits. You can say this is the these or this is the team or these are the teams that can deploy applications using this policy. Applications deployed using this policy, for example, will automatically get this auto scale. So minimum amount of replicas or maximum when it should be kind of triggered and so on. Developers that are deploying applications using this policy, when they assign C names to their applications, they can only uh, um, assign C names using um, this URLs, for example, or these domains. Anything other than that, if anyone tries to be funny and assigns app1.google.com, it won't work. Security scan, so you make sure that if this is a production, for example, type of policy, you want to make sure that no vulnerabilities except these are allowed, you can enforce that. You can enforce network policy, you can enforce container registry. And again, at this point, you are not dealing with complex regal rules, Kubernetes API version 119 versus 121 or 122. You're basically defining business application logics. And here you can also find further information on each of these fields and how to define them and the options. I'm going to leave the description here in the video. Awesome. So this is the structure we have, right? If I look at my Shipa dashboard right now, I have no applications. And the way I'm going to be defining and deploying my applications, I have created two files here. One is called fleet apps, for example. And I hope you can see that 
it's not too small, but I have here, this is a fleet definition file, right? You can store it, git, ideally, store it in git. And here it says basically it's, it's a simple app and it's applying to the Kubernetes fleet local namespace. At this point, because my application definition tells which policies or which policy it should use, for example, if we go here, I can see here the policy and my policy is connected to one of the clusters, for example, um, that I created, then I can point this fleet definition to my fleet local. If I do, for example, kubectl cat namespace, I can see here my fleet local. This is my control cluster that I'm connected to. And I'm saying, okay, this is the repo URL and this is the path, right? So if I go now and say kubectl apply fleet apps, for example, it says it created. And if I do kubectl get fleet, I can see that it's starting to come up, right? If we go back to Shipa, in the events, I can see an application deployment is happening. It should be complete in, in a few seconds or it is complete already. All right, so now you are hooking up Fleet to monitor your Git repo and using Fleet and Shipa to deploy the app and enforcing the policies and now you're getting an application or developer portal here. And if I go into Git, GitOps app one, for example, which is our app, I can immediately get access to my application. Shipa automatically creates that endpoint for you. You can see information about later who, as you scale the number of application services, developers and everything with Git, with Fleet and Shipa, you can see who created what, when, what type of plan the application or services are using, where these are actually being exposed. You can see transactions and everything from an application. So now your developers can really support and manage their own apps. And you also get a view of the, your application dependencies, right? So here is my bulletin board deployment. And here are all the objects and the information of all of them and the status, which is dynamically updated for my, my application. So if there is anything wrong now, even if your developers, they don't know Kubernetes super well, just like you do, they can easily identify where the problem is. Not only that, but you can also see service to service communication. So if there are network policies assigned to this application by the developer or by you as part of the policies, you can see that here. Awesome. So now you give, you have Ranger to create your clusters, you have Fleet to do the, uh, um, the GitOps part and you have Shipa as the application platform um, for your developers. Not only that, but if I go here and I delete my application, for example, manually, let's say a developer just went in and deleted the application. In a few seconds, the resource reconciliation is going to kick in and it's going to say, well, this application is no longer here, but it's still defined in Git and Shipa automatically start recreating this application and deploying this application again in a few seconds. And while it does that, we can, do, we can look at the same from a policy perspective. If we go back to our uh, fleet here, the uh, GitHub repo uh, where fleet is connected, I can see policies, for example, like we mentioned before, and a fleet dev policy definition, very application-centric policy. If we go to fleet and I say I have one called fleet policies, for example, same structure, very easy, right? Fleet is awesome in that sense. You, I'm saying it's a simple policy, namespace, fleet local as well. And I'm saying, well, here is the repo and this is the path. Pretty straightforward, just like the app one. Um, if we just do, just checking to make sure, if we go back to our Chrome, you're gonna see that fleet dev is not here, right? Because we have not connected fleet to that, uh, to watch that repo. If we go kubectl apply fleet policies, for example, 
in a second, if we come in here, we're gonna see the policy start to be created. See, the policy framework. And if we go back to applications, for example, the application that the developer deleted by mistake or on purpose is brought back because this is not in your, uh, this is still in your Git, right? The definition of the desired state is still there. And your application is still accessible and everything. Awesome. And now, how do you actually effectively delete this, right? And the framework, the fleet dev, it's, it's here in all its glory with all the definitions that you had. If we want to say kubectl delete fleet policies and kubectl delete fleet app, for example, this is the proper way of removing the policies or removing the apps because it's no longer in your desired state. If we go back here, for example, fleet dev is gone in this case and my application is now gone. All right, so by combining Fleet and Shipa, you have a complete GitOps stack, right? You can go from a very simple, easy, and quick to implement um, GitOps solution like Fleet and connecting it to Shipa, now you start getting application and policy level definitions that it's easy for you to define, connect, and enforce, and scale across multiple clusters and teams. Your developers, they get an application definition that they can quickly use you get a developer portal or an application portal, platform, or whatever you want to call it, um, where you can bring DevOps teams, SREs, and developers to manage application, connect to incident management, and so on. You get resource reconciliation and more. So both combined become a very strong and complete application platform for you that are, that are already using Rancher as the tool of choice. Thanks for taking the time and watching this video. I hope this was informative and gave you an opportunity to see one of the options you have to combine Fleet and Shipa to have a complete application platform driven by GitOps. Um, if you have specific use cases you would like to see or explore or question, feel free to leave in the comments or just send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you.